What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It's the Earthmaster here on this Thursday night, October 13th, 2022. It's about 8.44 p.m. California time. Latest quake. Uh, let's see what we got out here. It looks like a 3.6 earthquake in the mix over here around the Java Trench. Kind of towards the eastern edge here of the Java Trench. A little bit of uptick in activity following that 6.4 around the Papua New Guinea area. And that kind of makes sense there, considering all the deeper activity we've seen in Fiji. Another area kicking up is along the Kermadec Trench, and that was one of our other watch areas here for a potential movement, considering the adjustment of the plates. Kind of what we're seeing there, it's all kind of playing out. All right, let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here on the USGS map. We'll go ahead and start uh, down here, south, into the area where we've seen that uh, 6.4 earthquake come in. Originally came in as a 6.2 from the EMSC, looks like USGS upgraded that a little bit, uh, surprisingly, to a 6.4 at 71 kilometers deep uh, for this area. So what have we seen since this area or since this uh, earthquake? Well, a little bit of adjustment along the Kermadec Trench, as noted here. In fact, two earthquakes. Uh, looks like at least one of those is somewhat deep. Now this area did see an eight pointer last year. So I'm not really expecting anything in that magnitude range uh, specifically for this area, but there is a segment down here. And of course, along the Hikarangi subduction zone that we're kind of watching uh, where we've seen that deeper 5.1 uh, earlier today, 166 kilometers deep into this area. But uh, overall things adjusting accordingly and uh, with this activity here, the 6.4, we should see some further adjustment over along the Java Trench and up around the Mariana Trench, uh, potentially, uh, with the northwestward plate movement here of the Pacific Plate and the pressure gradients. Now, USGS not really showing anything here on this map, but uh, we've seen that on the Earthquake 3D globe there from the EMSC model. So we know there's a little bit of activity kind of ramping up there. Uh, up here in the Kuro Kamchaka Trench, that was from earlier. Over here around India, let's see what we got here. Looks like we do have a recent uh, earthquake in the India area. 4.9 at 10 kilometers deep. Kind of out there into the uh, somewhat off the plate boundary there. We don't see too much activity out there in that section, but uh, a little bit today. Also, um let's see it looks like the philippines kind of kicking up a little bit as well with a 4.4 at 82 kilometers uh into the philippine trench all right south america showing a little bit of activity as well 4.5 into the argentina area this is pretty deep though about 193 kilometers deep into the peru chile trench there typical swarming around the caribbean plate haven't really seen too much um, uptick, at least within the last you know, within the last couple hours. We've seen a maybe a couple twos and threes there around the Puerto Rico area. Let's go ahead and cover the uh, states up here. Just got a 3.8 notification there in Peru, so things are definitely kicking up onto the uh, into the uh, South America region as we speak. Not a whole lot going on up here. Uh, we did have some activity earlier this morning time frame. <coughs> Excuse me. Into the Gorda Ridges. Uh, this earthquake activity sits behind the Cascadia Mega Thrust Zone. And a lot of pressure built up here in this area um, over time. And uh, I think when we see activity kind of within this region, that's just a good indicator of the continual stress along the Cascadia. While we're talking about the Cascadia, let's go ahead and check out the trimmer map tonight uh, along the Cascadia. And it looks like we got uh, 468 epicenters today, Thursday the 13th, um, mostly confined to our two areas once again. This has been an ongoing ordeal for a little while and kind of started back on the... Uh, we can go over the last month or so, since about 9.13 to uh, today's date. Although most of the activity happened within the last two weeks. Uh, you can see 
this massive amount of, of uh, trimmer activity all confined here to one section and that's kind of like the central section here of the Cascadia into the Oregon area underneath Oregon I should say uh, 10,689 epicenters over a month time frame that's a pretty good number actually a really good number it's uh, above average for a typical trimmer activity and uh, some of that increasing down into the southern portion of the states now or not into the states but a uh, southern portion of um, the Cascadia now got to remember here when we're subducting that Juan de Fuca plate that's going to be this whole plate right here <clears throat> right here excuse me uh, it's kind of being shoved here underneath the North American plate and that trimmer activity is being registered down there about 35, 45 kilometers deep into the um, the trimmer area, the Cascadia subduction zone, down dip uh, of this area, of this line right here, which is a plate boundary, subduction zone. And, um, you know, one can't help but wonder the amount of stress that is taking it to shove that down underneath the North American plate, the amount of pressure, so to speak. So a lot of times we do see these earthquakes pop off out here in the basin and back behind this area around the Blanco fracture zone. So uh, not surprised to see a four pointer out there earlier today uh, into the Gorda Ridges area. It is kind of sitting down here on the southern end of the Cascadia trimmer zone. Uh, and again, that's kind of just to the west here. So I think as long as this activity is continuing, we should be on guard. Uh, and I, I've always said that I believe the trimmer plays a major part in possibly predicting the next mega quake out here along the Cascadia. So just watching it pretty closely. Uh, let's see, in Northern California for the rest of the matter here, not a whole lot. A couple small earthquakes there south of Eureka. Uh, one earthquake outside of Davis. Uh, they're kind of in the Sacramento Valley, just to the west of Sacramento. Kind of an oddball earthquake. Uh, not 100% certain which fault system this struck on. I'm not seeing really anything listed on this map. We would have to go here to the interactive map and uh, let's see what we got here for this little earthquake. It's just a, a weird one. Interactive map. I'm going to bring up the uh, U.S. faults here and it doesn't really give too much. Uh, there is the Great Valley Thrust Zone that sits over here along the western portion, but Man, I wish I, I kind of just wish the USGS would have a map with all the fault systems on here in an interactive type of uh, setting. And I just can't find it. Maybe I'm not looking deep enough, but uh, there's a little fault up here to the north, uh, just outside of the woodland area. And uh, actually, it's listed up here Dunnigan Hills Fault, right there. Uh, but this earthquake struck kind of in an odd area out there, so. Either way, just a little weird. I kind of pay attention to these uh, oddball earthquakes on occasion because it could be an indicator of some stress in a region. Some movement along the creeping section. Uh, not a whole lot going on around the uh, super volcano here, the Long Valley super volcano, nor Ridgecrest. Uh, the Willer Ridge area down here around the Tehachapi Mountains kind of calming down as well. Got a little bit of uh, activity here. North of the, uh, let's see where we're at here. That's a, a couple earthquakes here. It looks like a 1.5 and a 2.0. Um, this fault system, Pine Mountain Fault and the Santa Cruz Mountain Faults. Oh, Santa Ynez Fault Zone, Eastern Section. I know this one here is kind of a thrust zone. It's kind of lengthy. Definitely a lengthy fault zone. I'm Kind of curious as to what uh, what uh, the seismographs or the um, Southern California Earthquake Data Center have to say about that. So let me kind of want to run over here real quick and just see what's going on with it. Uh, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. I, that, wow, okay. I jumped right past that. There we go. So this is actually a pretty lengthy fault zone, 130 kilometers long. Uh, near Willer Springs area, most uh, most recent surface rupture. Looks like a short segment near the intersection. Uh, got not a whole lot of buildup. This is some very small accumulated stress rates there, but it does show a left reverse faulting. So I kind of thought this was a 
uh, thrust fault zone. So I'm a little, little confused on that one. Uh, 6.5 to 7.5 magnitude. Not a whole lot of recent data on here. Dips to the south. There we go. Uh, for that uh, fault system. Again, pretty, uh, pretty lengthy. Southern California is a major complex of spider webs and and uh, some crazy fault systems, known and unknown, I'm sure. Uh, 2.2 down here off the San Jacinto fault zone, also a 1.3 uh, near La Quinta, uh, Quinta area, it looks like. Southern branch of the San Andreas fault looks pretty quiet for now. Did have some activity here south of the border with a 2.6, also some activity in the Gulf. We'll check that out here in just a second on the EMSC model. Uh, Yellowstone National Park still swarming up here. Got about 20 earthquakes listed. The Yellowstone thumbnail overview, normally the site is called isthisthingon.org, is offline currently. Um, they are not uh, accessible, so I, th I think this uh, individual is moving its server somewhere, so that will not be accessible. But uh, as I mentioned here a couple of videos back, we can access all of those Yellowstone stations here pretty uh, nicely from the uh, University of Utah here and uh, see for ourselves the raw data coming in from these oh man hold on a second here I forgot this is one of those uh, one of those pages for whatever when I click on it doesn't want to uh, show you guys but now it will see it kind of popped up in a different pop-up window I thought you guys could see it but double check my broadcasting software and it wasn't showing it to you guys so here we go uh, an overview there, uh, at least of this seismograph station. Still seeing some activity with, within the last couple hours. Of course, we had that two-pointer there and a couple other smaller quakes throughout the day today. An ongoing swarm of earthquake activity there at Yellowstone National Park. And uh, it's just been continuous, kind of a lengthy swarm. Now, not a big one by any means, far as the magnitudes go or the multitudes, but just a consistent earthquake swarm uh, for that matter. All right, let's see uh, what else we got here. Oklahoma, kind of curious to see what we got here around the Kingfisher area. Latest earthquake here was just a, uh, looks like a, a couple hours ago. Had a 1.5 near the Dover area. Little break, a little pause in between that last earthquake and the uh, previous one. So things are still kind of kicking up out here, although it's, calming down a little bit so I'm gonna probably drop this earthquake watch out here for Oklahoma uh, it looks like maybe some of the activity has kind of relieved off here off of the um, the North American plate but still just be on guard um, and we'll keep an eye on that swarm see if it intensifies or not eastern portion of the country all pretty quiet uh, not a whole lot going on out there around the eastern US North Atlantic Ocean I've got some activity out here once again around the Charlie Gibbs Fracture Zone. This area seen a world of, or at least a, a wealth of earthquakes over the past month or so. Talking about 216 earthquakes, and these are not microquakes. These are a bunch of moderate-sized quakes, some of them up into the 5 range. So uh, it was a pretty good swarm, and it just came to a stop, and that was it. A uh, little bit of activity further south of that swarm, so we'll keep an eye on it for sure. That earthquake kicking up 4.8 today, just a couple hours or so ago. Um, there's the activity along the New Zealand area, and uh, <clears throat> I think we definitely need to watch this area pretty closely. And uh, I think just kind of seemed like they're kicking back into gear since the earthquake movement uh, over the past couple days or the deeper activity into Fiji. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, we checked Trimmer. Trimmer's pretty, uh, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to check out the uh, Mount Hood area. Looks like there was a little speck of an earthquake up there earlier today. I'm gonna check out this seismograph station there. Beautiful volcano, top of Palmer Lift. So maybe, uh, hopefully no interference. Oh, there we go. Little earthquake activity here, even within the last hour it looks like. See that spike? And over the course of the day, that may be, that definitely looks like an earthquake, but not super um, close to this station. Now, there is some S, um, 
some surface waves there, I believe, being um, sent across the seismograph station. That's going to be from the 6.4 in the Papua New Guinea area earlier this evening. So those waves can definitely uh, travel around the globe. But a little bit of seismic activity there at Mount Hood. Nothing major, nothing um, out of the ordinary, right? Sometimes we just see a little earthquake activity there at various volcanoes, and that seems to happen quite a bit. Uh, no major solar flare events to speak of. The solar flare potential dropping like a rock, so to speak. 85% chance for a C flare, M flare at 25, a 1% chance or less for an X flare. Things are very mellow across the board. A little bit of roar amplification here from the... Uh, Aurora forecast, and I bet that's got to do with a little bit of tilt here. Notice that line separation. BZ component, major tilting south, allowing whatever solar wind stream to flow in. And there's not a whole lot, but it is going to allow for a little bit of elevated conditions there at the higher latitudes. It looks like maybe a, yeah, yeah, maybe up to around a 50% chance of uh, auroras up there into Canada and uh, Looks like Greenland, Iceland areas, all you lucky guys up there. Lucky guys and girls and folks. That's on my bucket list. I, I would love to visit Iceland and uh, see all the volcano activity along with the Aurora Borealis. I mean, that's, it's, I think that's on a lot of people's bucket lists and that's, that's going to happen, I think, eventually. Just got to make it happen. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, kind of skipped out there on Hawaii. I want to go back here to the big island and see what's going on. Uh, I didn't see a whole lot of activity here. In fact, things look like they're kind of calming down here in the area. No earthquakes within the last hour. And if we look at the uh, hazard notification system here from the USGS with the HVO, their daily update was put out this morning time frame. That's Kilauea still continuing. Um, not a whole lot here on the Mauna Loa. Uh, they're still showing 53 small magnitude earthquakes between, uh, uh, or at least below 3.0, down there at about two to three miles below the surface. Uh, looks like global GPS systems at the summit and on the flanks of Mauna Loa continue to measure inflation at rates of elevated, uh, at rates elevated since mid-September. However, uh, tilt meters at the summit are not showing significant surface deformation over the past week. So things kind of mellowing out right now, Temporary, temporarily, I should say. Um, all gas conditions look to remain stable. Of course, you got CO2, H2S, SO2, all those volcanic gases that we look for in terms of possibly predicting or forecasting a volcanic eruption. They look pretty calm for now. All right, guys. Have a good night. I'm going to go back uh, to watching a little movie here with Missy Mimi's and um, probably call it uh, probably call it a night. I know we didn't check the EMSC globe or the uh, EMSC map, but here on the globe, this does show the EMSC activity. And that's the deeper movement earthquakes here south um, of this little swarm of activity along the Kermadec Trench. And all this activity deep somewhat into the Hikurangi subduction zone. Um, may have to cover that tomorrow. Might dig up a little bit more info on it and see what I can uh, discover. Um, again, I've kind of covered it a few times in the past, but uh, it's always good to bring that back up. New Zealand, um, you know, I think that's a pretty good threat for the New Zealand area should that uh, possibly create a uh, large earthquake. The Karangi Subduction Zone. Look it up if you guys are bored. Uh, it's a little pretty cool. Little interesting articles you can find out there. But we'll, we'll take a look at that a little bit more uh, tomorrow night. And then we'll go from there. But uh, anyway, have a good night, folks. Stay safe out there. We will chat you guys pretty soon. I, again, I'm dropping the... Uh, I'm going to drop out the... Oklahoma earthquake watch for now because of the declining activity there but uh, if we see that swarm ramp up again then that's something we need to watch pretty closely have a good night guys we'll catch you a little bit later on peace out